Okay, so welcome to this week's call. Uh, my name is Jackie Boyle and I've got a very close friend of mine, Dr. Ron Borsima Sr. to be able to help us out in uh, just talking about Emulin and talking about 24-7. And if anybody's got any questions, then we will do our utmost to be able to, um, to answer them. And I do apologise on behalf of Dr. Aarons again uh, to be able to fill in for him obviously isn't the preferred because I know that you would all prefer to see his face but unfortunately due to his family commitments um, that's just not possible at the moment but what we are going to look at doing today it is question and answer uh, week so if nobody has any questions at all we're just going to bounce backwards and forwards in lots of questions that we often um, constantly get asked and then that way you're going to be able to share this and use it and Hopefully it'll be able to supply you with the information um, about certain things. So how are you today anyway, Ron? Hey, I'm doing well, Jackie. Nice, uh, cool, sunny day here in Michigan and uh, enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, living in, um, in Australia, we are in, in summer. We're heading in the tail the last month of summer, but it's still my favourite time of the year because the warmer it is, the more I enjoy it. So... Um, as we were talking earlier, I, I look at some of the the temperatures that are coming up in, in you guys on that side of the equator in like minus 50. I'm just like, oh my goodness me. <laughs> oh, it's just, oh, I just can't even contemplate sort of being in that kind of weather, but I guess you get accustomed to it. So anyway, um, look, as we get going, I know Diana's asked a question and I know that you did put this through um, into an email to Dr. Aarons as well, Diana. So I'm going to ask you this, Ron. I know this is um, something you'll be able to answer is that um, Diana's got a, a friend with diabetes and also with depression and high blood pressure. And just wondering, um, you know, should we have any concern for her using Amulin? And obviously I know that the next question is going to be as to uh, which formula of Amulin should she be using when we're looking at diabetes, depression and high blood pressure and why? Yeah, good questions, Diana. Um, you know, Amulin, just to give a quick overview is just one of the most unique products that I've ever seen at uh, my age of life. And it's one that I will take as long as God gives me breath to take it, I will be taking it because it's food. You know, and we all need food to assist, assist us in life. And uh, there's always the deep questions of, if I have this, can I take this? Well, the simple question is, can you eat foods? So what Emulin is, is a food. We, we really need to think back to the simplicity of what Emulin is. Even though it's very unique, complex, and profound, it's still a food. It's coming from nature. So, and it's something that the body recognizes as food. So it's gonna take it and use it appropriately. And it's really reducing inflammation in the body. And just about the root of every condition that man is known to have, where you get itis to it or anything like that, it's inflammation. So is it good? Yes. If we're a diabetic, we have blood sugar issues going on, then the ambulance C is definitely gonna be the one to be using. A high blood pressure, you know, I think you can go either way with, with just high blood pressure alone. You can use the C or the M for that matter, and it won't affect it negatively. It's, it's all going to be positive, but you're going to get bigger benefit using the C if you're dealing with blood sugar levels that need to be controlled. So that's, that's the short answer to all of that. That's excellent. That's a good um, answer too. Thanks, Ron, for that. So... I think what we might actually do is to look at going through the timeline of life. Uh, and when I say let's go through the timeline of life, let's look at um, as from the moment of conception, Ron. So when we've got a woman that's fallen pregnant and, you know, she's carrying a child and she's going through that period of, um, of being pregnant, um, you know, we look at many times we get people ask us, can we take Emulin whilst we're pregnant? And there's two areas that we look at that as a, a normal pregnancy that goes through without any issues, so to speak. And then we also have a woman um, during pregnancy that may be diagnosed with um, gestational diabetes. Uh, which formula can you suggest for, gest for gestational diabetes? 
and also for a woman that is carrying a child during pregnancy that isn't um, diagnosed with gestational diabetes, what formula and why? If we can just give people an answer there. Uh, the gestational, to be honest with you, I have not looked into that enough to give you a clear answer on whether the C or the M. In general, about being pregnant, M. I mean, again, you know, what we want to do is when that little baby is conceived, the baby is only going to be as good as the mother's nutrients. The, what the mother's consuming is what the, the baby is feeding from. So it's, it's critical that she tries to eat a healthy diet, tries to really avoid sugars and carbohydrates that really cause inflammation in the body so that that baby can grow and develop into a good, healthy child. And that's really the key in keeping the, the blood sugars balanced. Emulin is going to really help. And I, my opinion would be M. Um, and I don't know scientifically if that's provable or not, but uh, M is it's going to regulate the inflammation in the body. It's going to feed the body the nutrients it needs to really help produce good, healthy growth in that little fetus growing in the body. Okay, so um, I'll elaborate then in regards to gestational diabetes. Um, that's an area that I've uh, worked with some women and I know uh, through speaking with Dr. Ahrens that if a woman is diagnosed with gestational diabetes, then the formula Emulin C is the preferred one because uh, it is about the insulin levels that become um, unstable. Um, so they do need to be taking Emulin C if they have been diagnosed with gestational diabetes by their physician um, whilst carrying the child. So in both cases, um, as Dr. Arians will say, it is the best way possible of being able to ensure that the mother is getting all the nutrients uh, that is necessary and provide that child with the best start to life uh, because they are getting uh, fueled with the, the missing flavonoids that they otherwise would not get within uh, the the natural diet that we have as much as we try um, and it just provides that baby with um, the best possible start to life so emulin c if they are diagnosed with gestational diabetes and otherwise emulin m and it is safe across the board in regards to from the moment of conception um, of when you first fall pregnant to when that child is delivered now the next question i will go we're going through this timeline of life so then the next question would be when would you start actually putting emulin into um, a child's regime? So mothers, some mothers will choose to um, breastfeed. That's quite simple. You know, whatever they're consuming. So if they're taking emulin M um, and they're not, uh, they do not have insulin instability, then they would be taking uh, emulin through their own body. And that's going to go through into the baby through uh, the breast milk that they're taking. But I know with, um, uh, from what Dr. Ahrens has mentioned before, with babies that are bottle fed, um, he generally has mentioned that it's around that six to eight week period um, to let them adjust and then introduce it in through into their, their bottle in that way um, for that. Have you got anything to say in regards to that, Ron, that you'd like to add? Yeah, and again, I guess it would... Um, uh... I'll preface this by saying if, if the woman has been using emulin throughout her pregnancy, then to continue to use it in the child, I don't think would be an issue at all because the baby is already used to getting emulin in the body and it's a necessity. And we all know it's a necessity for all of life. But if they start out a child, a young child, then I think it's going to be uh, a little more, um, I don't want to use the word cautious, but uh, prudent in terms of how much and like Dr. Joe would say when they start eating solid foods then to be using it and again like it's proportionally and you can open up the capsule you can put the powder in a capsule into a you know smoothie or whatever into their bottle and, and just use common sense in terms of the amount or the size of the child. Yeah yeah no that's what I've I've um, often heard Dr. Aaron's talk about as well and then you know, so in regards to babies, um, yes, it is. It is quite okay. And and again, we're not aiming to heal, cure, and or fix. Um, and we also would like to add to this as we progress through that, you know, you work with your physician. You know, Dr. Ahrens is not your physician. We are not your physicians. Um, and you obviously take that route to 
keep your physician informed um, as well as to what you're doing. But at the end of the day, it's food that you're actually fueling your body with and also your child's body with um, as you go forward. So let's shift into... Um, May I make a comment on that too? You know, it, it's, it's, I have seen so many times, uh, not lately in the last few years because everything's been kind of closed down, but you go out to the mall or you go and see kids being pushed down the street by their parents and their little strollers and they're sucking on a bottle of soda. Now, is that going to be more beneficial to the child or is Emulin going to be more beneficial? So, I mean, it's just using some common sense that maybe isn't so common anymore. Uh, we, we've got to get back to feeding the body and helping people understand what food is. And a soda pop is definitely not food for the body. No, it's loaded with sugar. Um, exactly. <laughs> the bottom line. So, and that leads us into toddlers. So we might take that, you know, that two-year-old through to, let's say, the five-year-old before they start school in general, like go to, to big school, so to speak. Um, you know, looking at, again, and unless there's any real reason that there's any um, sugar instabilities for a child, an emulent M um, generally should be the, the formula that would be preferred, and there's no reason why they can't. Um, take that all the way right through. And there's various ways that they can digest that too, as far as a child's concerned into, um, I've heard people say that they've mixed it up into, into cookies, like into natural based um, cookies that they've put it into. They put it into a healthy smoothie. Um, they may have put it into, into a juice, like obviously a sugarless juice um, for them to be able to consume so they can get it through. But as a child at that age, um, Ron, just very briefly, like that two to five year period, like what would be the benefits in your opinion for them to, to have this in their diet? Well, I guess again, to just really help the body to uh, be in balance because we, we see parents or grandparents or great grandparents uh, giving the kids those little snoops as we would say in Dutch, uh, those little uh, treats and they're not healthy treats as a rule, you know, and, and they want to make the kid feel good because that's what parents and grandparents and great grandparents do. But, you know, I like to take things in liquid forms better than in solid forms because of the bioavailability. So if you can put it into a, a, a liquid, I think it's going to be more beneficial than, and maybe because of the digestion. We don't know how the digestive system is developed yet at that age. Uh, some people have a challenge with it. So I, I like liquids to put it in a liquid and it's going to be probably more bioavailable. Okay. And then again, proportionally to the size and the weight of the child. We've seen kids and I, I've worked with a couple of, uh, at age five was overweight, grossly overweight in dealing with diabetes, prediabetes. I mean, that's a serious problem. So we got to get those blood sugars under control. Emulin is a great answer to that. Which would be Emulin C when they've been uh, clinically yes, exactly. diagnosed. Yeah, exactly. So Ron, when we shift into, you know, let's go into big school and we, you know, head into a five-year-old and let's go, you know, that five to 12-year-old um, age child, adolescent as we go through. So there's a few things that are happening for them. You know, we look at their learning capacity, what they're exposed to, their social dynamics or um, change because they are heading into school. So they've got their home life to deal with. They've got their school life to deal with. They have to have the ability to um, have as the best possible way of being able to absorb information, i.e. learning, um, because it's very important for them to be able to, um, their cognitive skills, uh, their mobility, all of these things um, comes back to their brain health as well. And that we need to be able to ensure that we have not only their brain health, their gut health, just in general, um, we want them to be able to be performing at their best possible um, manner that they can by the, the food that we ingest, or the, sorry, that we give to them that they ingest. But Amulin becomes a very big part of um, completing that that jigsaw for them. Did you want to add um, some thoughts in regards to that for that age bracket? Because I know it's it's super important for kids to have emulin uh, for their learning, uh, mobility, 
uh, all those types of things. Yeah, that learning thing is really a critical thing. And you, we do that with our brains and with our brains are dealing with inflammation. Uh, we see a lot of problems. In fact, they're getting involved in sports at that age. And some of them play football or soccer. Uh, football in the U.S., uh, soccer around the world, but uh, football there. But, you know, there, there's damage to the brain that occurs uh, through ingesting a poor diet. So it's really critical at that learning stage to have that inflammation in the brain down so the brain can absorb. So we can be normal children without depression. Because again, a lot of that goes back to inflammation. And it sounds like a broken record, an easy answer, but it's just that simple and true. Inflammation is really the underlying cause of so many things. And if we can reduce the inflammation by making good dietary choices, and that goes back to the parents, who should be taking Emulin to give them the brains to, to tell their kids they need to eat a healthier diet. But then to get Emulin in the diet is so critical for the development of a child because they're gonna go into what's coming next with those teenage years and those reproductive years. Yeah. So even sticking in that age bracket there, like this five to 12 year age bracket, uh, Ron, too, I think that, you know, just as adults, we talk about it and talk about uh, task management and, and to be able to remain focused. And for a child of that age, there's, you know, they're like a, a, a puppy in some ways. There's so much going on around them. And, you know, to try and keep their attention span, uh, you know, task focused and, you know, to be able to stay uh, task, man like task management as well. Uh, to get rid of that brain fog, you know, and that can come with food as well. So this is where Emulin can become a, a critical um, element to put into their diet too, to help them with their learning capacity to be able to, i.e. focus on what they're doing, but to be able to absorb what is being taught to them too. Do you agree with that? Totally. You know, it, that ADHD and ADD are so prevalent in our culture today. It wasn't in my year, and we'll get to that eventually here a long ways down the road, but uh, <laughs> we, we, we have that condition that's there, but it goes back again to the diet. It goes back to the lack of flavonoids that are in our diet today that are causing a lot of these conditions to occur in the first place. So I mean, it is so appropriate, like Dr. Joe says, from womb to tomb, but at that age when they're learning, critical because they need that focus, they need that attention, and, and I work with kids that are five to 12 years of age, and I can see the some of them have it, some of them don't. And I, I know what's going on in their families because they talk, and you can just see where it's needed and what's missing. So it's very, very important we get Emulin in everyone. So I guess, Ron, to the other thing to mention, you know, as we balance, and this this goes all the way right through the timeline of life. And we didn't plan for this, um, for this conversation to happen like this. And sometimes that's the best way that, you know, we end up with a remarkable um, conversation and topic like this, because it is important for people to understand. But sleep's such a huge um, important factor. So if we can get that balanced diet and the child's able to sleep very well, and as we shift into adolescence, then we have a lot of things that are going on for a child in regards to obviously their hormones are starting to change. You know, as a, a woman, things are starting to alter for them at different um, stages. Um, it can happen even at 10, start to begin to happen at 10. Um, for a male, same thing. For a young boy as well, things start to alter for them. But it's not just their hormones that start to change. We start then to look into uh, what's physically happening to them, but then we look at socially what's happening to them because that becomes a new dynamic within itself because they've got social media, they've got peer pressure that's going on. They may be developing faster than the next child. They may be the, um, you know, the child that's a little bit more shy, so they're, they're they're getting peer pressure at school, like all of these things they're trying to manage and cope with. But unlike us, when we were at school, we got respite from it. So we'd go home and we didn't have these wonderful <laughs> phones, um, you know, and social media. So we would get time out. There is no time out anymore. You know, like these kids are on the phones at the nighttime as well. So when we start looking at teenagers, and they're eating things, you know, they might be getting some lunch money. So do you think they're going to choose healthy choices? 
I doubt that. So when we look at Amulin as to how that's going to assist that child through those teenage years, through puberty, um, how do you feel about this? Like, what are your opinion on this? What's your thoughts on it? Mm. <laughs> you know, we, we have seen such drastic changes and, you know, I've lived a long life, so I've watched a lot of generations happen after me. And what I'm seeing is the premature um, growth of people today, young kids today, they're, they're getting into that puberic stage real quick and way younger than what they used to. When I was a kid, you know, a woman would maybe start menstruating at about 13, 14, or even 15. Now we're seeing 10 and nine. Yeah. So what's the difference? And again, it goes back to diet. You know, what we're putting in the body is what we become. And, and that means emulin, but it means food as well. So it's really critical that they get those flavonoids to reduce the inflammation, which is going to help with blood sugar control, which is going to help with weight control. And you talk about a, a lot of girls, you know, they may uh, be a little chunky and then they're going to have that peer pressure going on. And that makes their distractions greater uh, because they're not focused on learning. They're focused on maybe trying to eat right or starving themselves. And that goes into a whole nother issue of bulimia and, and anorexia and all that stuff. And I think the pressure today is just huge. And like you say, these things here are controlling it. When I was a kid in the wintertime, and I was just happy to drive by today after I dropped the kids off from the school to the daycare, they were outside playing at 20 degree temperature down the, down the uh, snow banks that, from the plow at the church parking lot. So they're outdoors rather than being on the stupid media things all day long. So they're yeah. getting some physical exercise, which is really critical for good development at that age too. And you know, we're not seeing the kids grow up outdoors. We're seeing them indoors all the time. They're not getting good exercise and not getting the fresh air. And they're definitely then sitting around eating all the wrong foods. And we need emulin and we need those flavonoids to help the body go through those changes which are going to occur. How they occur is what we put in our body. Yeah. And I think the other thing that I'd like to bring up and we can transition sort of into that next next stage because it's all very relevant and all of these things that we have spoken about through this timeline of life um, still is very um, relevant in every single part of the timeline of life is our diet, is that mobility, is the, the mental um, aspect of what we're going through at different stages throughout our life. So if we even look at as a young teenager, and then heading into, you know, they're in high school and then we start and go into where they're heading into university um, and into college, you know, as well, that the mental strain. So if we look at mental health and again, we're not looking to make any claims to heal, cure and or fix anything here whatsoever. All we're looking at is the timeline of life and how Emulin can have an impact by being able to support and assist um, that person at that point in time in their life that it's we're trying to explain that how critical it is and how much it can actually help to manage the symptoms that people are dealing with as they go through life so when we start looking hi pal so as we start looking at um at children that are uh, young teenagers that are going through um, their high school certificate and then they shift into college and they're having to then again manage uh, study, manage uh, the social aspect of life, manage the responsibility by this stage. Some of them are even, um, they've got jobs. You know, they, they're starting to earn money as part-time money as well. Then they've got their family dynamics at home. Um, and then again, it's what they, they may be being fueled. Time management becomes an issue for them at this point in time too, because it's very critical that they're trying to jam all of these things into their day that sometimes all of a sudden time management becomes poor uh, and they're grabbing the wrong food. So again, this is where emulin can be critical for them physically, mentally, and emotionally. Um, do you want to add to that in, in that yeah, range? It's great support for the body because we are going through those changes into those early years and into our 20s as well. But the changes that occur in the body are dramatic. I mean, uh, and if we don't have that 
good exercise, good sleep, good diet. And, and good diet includes emulin because it's the flavonoids that really help with that reduction of inflammation, which we're gonna get. I, I don't care where you live in the world, we're not gonna live a perfectly healthy, clean diet. A very few people get to that point where their whole focus in life is food, 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 and you're eating perfectly. And even if you are, you're outdoors, you're gonna be breathing in toxins that are out there in the atmosphere because a diesel truck just went by and you're out exercising like we do and we're breathing in the toxic fumes. We can smell it. And I and just, I wanna hold my breath when a truck goes by because I don't wanna breathe in that garbage, but we do. So we need that always in all areas of life to have good outcomes in learning, in development of jobs, in interaction with people in our jobs. So if we've got that from the beginning, way back to that baby now, if, if that level has been good flavonoid um, production in the body, or not production, but good flavonoid in the body all the time since in the womb, there's going to be a stability there that's going to allow us to handle things much, much better than if we don't have it. Yeah. And I think sort of as we go through, uh, you know, for those like going through high school, going through college, going to university, we then have the other part of the social aspect of alcohol. Um, and obviously there's other party things that can be included in that too. But there's a, there is a really big, at that point in time in life for, for people, um, commonly it can step in that stress becomes a very huge um, dominant part of their life, depression, anxiety. And unfortunately, um, you know, we then start to look at uh, suicide, you know, like it's a, it's, it is an age bracket of where it's got a higher rate of suicide. And again, we're not we're not trying to say that emulin is going to stop that. What we're looking at in regards is to trying to nurture the body to be able to provide it to um, lessen the levels of inflammation, to stop fueling the body's um, inflammatory levels through the amount of sugars that they consume, through the amount of carbohydrates, refined carbohydrates that they may consume, that emulin is able to manage it, being the world's first carbohydrate manager. Um, and being able to control sugars with both of those two things fuel inflammation, which then create problems for, like I said, depression, anxiety, um, which then unfortunately can lead into, in some cases, um, you know, people taking their own lives. So it's, it's even that within itself. I don't know how you feel about that, Don, uh, Ron, but I think it's really important that people put this into their diets to be able to manage their stress levels. Yeah, you know, it's really all about creating stability and balance, homeostasis in, in, in life, not just in our diets, in, but in our life. And that's, it's so simple and yet very, very complex. And I just think emulin is such a great adjunct to putting it all together in the body. And then we're going to come up on these years when these kids are not only getting out there and getting a job, they're thinking about having families. So maybe you want to take it there. Yeah, well, I, what I was going to even venture into <clears throat> as we shift through this timeline of life is that, you know, we've got young adults. So, you know, some you know, career-driven adults, we've got uh, professional sports people that are heading out into that world. We've got parents that are starting families. Sleep is a big issue. So if we start looking now that I'd like to bring into not only um, Amulin, but I'd also like to bring into this equation is 24-7 because 24-7 has that ability to be able to give them that extra energy boost through the day. Um, also having two active ingredients in it, the same as what Amulin does. So we're layering on top and we're supporting the body even more. But also it's got the 24-7 the PM. So it's going to assist them with sleep, which is imperative to have. So whether you're a young parent, and we all know that we're sleep deprived, if you've had children, um, you know that sleep is just, what the heck is sleep? Like, <laughs> why doesn't this kid sleep? <laughs> and then when they're sleeping, you're, you're constantly working, trying to catch up. So to be able to put 24 seven into that part of, you know, from our twenties through to our thirties, and we're trying to, provide for our family or we're chasing that career 
uh, we're sleep deprived and a lot of the time again we're not always eating right Amulin and 24-7 again become such a huge um, critical I believe component that we should be putting into our lives that we could benefit from what are your thoughts in in this age age bracket Ron? Yeah I think you're right Jackie because I think we need that uh, one-two punch in terms of uh, balancing the sugars and then creating the energy and the energy comes a lot from sleep because if you're sleep deprived you're not going to have that energy through the day when you need the energy to do your job to study in school to live a life uh, in a normal way, if there is such a thing <laughs> anymore. But uh, you know, it, it's such a combination. Dr. Joe is just brilliant in putting that together because we need that little assist to get us through that whole balance 24 seven. It just makes sense because we are living in a 24 seven cycle. We get up in the morning, maybe if we didn't sleep well, we're not gonna have that energy for the day. And then we're not gonna perform as well as we should. And we're gonna make poor food choices. So I think it's just layered together is just a powerful combination to help us to keep that balance or stability or homeostasis. Yeah, and then as we shift into, you know, we're going into our 30s and our 40s and, and let's even sneak into, you know, probably let's go from 30 through to that 50 age bracket because there's quite a big um, shift that starts to happen through there. So there's the energy levels for us that where we start to notice a change. You know, whether it be a gain through just general um, living, you know, as being a parent or being a um, somebody that's out into the corporate world, uh, whether you're playing sport, we start to notice that our body just doesn't repair as quickly as what it used to. It does not get over things as easily as what it used to. We start to get, um, you know, conditions and symptoms that we never used to get before. And, and inflammation is, is present in up to 90% of those things. So, you know, whether it be sinuses, whether it be that we've got, um, you know, congestion in, our, in our, our lungs, so to speak, or if we've got arthritis, if we've got um, IBS, so if we've got bowel problems, so our bowel doesn't start to function the same as when we were younger. Uh, we might have our mobility starts to become a little bit more demand, like uh, difficult for us. So we can't get out of the chair as easily as what we could when we were 15 and 16. Um, you know, that get out of the car even. Like how many of you when you're, if you're in that age bracket or you've been through that age bracket from, you know, 33 to 50, that all of a sudden you could bounce out of the car and now all of a sudden you're hanging onto the car door to help yourself get up to get out of the car. Um, so the mobility, but one is a really important thing, but it's again, it's sleep because we start to sleep less. Um, but the mobility and the aches and the pains, how many people start to say the aches and pains start to happen, but also our, um, for women, uh, you know, some of us go through menopause at that stage. So the body is starting to get through that uh, ability to be able to uh, fall pregnant, to bring life into the world. So our bodies start to change where we go through menopause. And as much as men don't even, and a lot of men don't realize, but they actually go through andopause. So we talk about men going through their midlife crisis. I used to think it was a big joke, you know, get the fast car, get the younger woman. Not saying you all you men do that either, but I mean, you know, midlife crisis for a man, what is that? Well, I actually ended up looking it up because I, when we had the fitness centre and the rehab centre, so many men, I used to think, what is wrong with you? I'm going through my midlife crisis. You know, I don't want to get old. You know, my body's changing. I want to get that fast car. I want to do this. I want to do that. So I started researching and, and went to my doctor and she said, well, there actually is a condition called andopause. So it's the male version of menopause and it's a medical condition. So just as women's estrogen levels start to lower, men's testosterone levels start to alter as well. So it's not just us girls. Um, it's you boys as well that change. So Amulin becomes really important in there too. And how do you, what are your comments in this age bracket, Ron? I'll let you know when it happens. Um. <laughs> oh, you haven't got <laughs> so, uh, You know, it's, it's really interesting, this whole conversation, because, you know, all of life is about change. And the only thing that's constant in life is change. 
You know, one of the things I wanted to double back on just a minute is, um, you know, the, the ability of a young woman to conceive, and we're seeing in today's culture, a lot of issues with women not being able to conceive or males being able to get the sperm count up to be able to produce life. And again, it goes back to what is not in our diet and the lack of the bioflavonoids that allow the body to function normally so that we have all those hormones that can function normally so that we can have children and have healthy children. And then as we go through that stage of not having children, uh, having it, you know, I, I'll just personally tell you that when Donna went through menopause quite a few years ago, you know, I hear, I used in practice, I used to hear these horrible stories about going through menopause and women were just having all these issues. And I remember our son coming up and saying to us one time, and he's 49 now, and this is quite a few years ago, said, mom, did you ever have, go through menopause? Was that ever a challenge for you? And it wasn't because, you know, the body was healthy. So if we keep the body healthy, there's going to be changes. Definitely they're going to happen. And some of them are going to express it a little differently than others. Some of it's just because of their genetic, um, what they've been dealt with. But most of it goes back to what we're putting in the body or not putting in the body. It's that simple. And we don't need to make it real complex. It's, it's the balance. It's the homeostasis. And we can go through those stages of life, have energy through all those stages of life. Uh, we were last year redoing the backyard and my 49 now year old son said, dad, I think you're in better shape than I am. Well, he's got a job that is very stressful. Uh, he's sitting on his butt most of the day and not physically working. I do too, but you know, we walk and he hasn't been, but we're out there moving and we're eating healthy and we're putting good, good nutrients and we're taking emulin in good quantities and 24 seven, which allows my body to be the best it can be at any age. So we can go through those stages of life with minimal challenges. Yeah, it's very well put, Ron. And, and, you know, as we, again, we shift into the later stages of life and, you know, and that can vary for many people. And sometimes that can be through um, genetic, um, you know, pre preconditions that people may have genetically that's been passed down to them. Um, through to that some may have the, the honor of being able to make it into their 90s, even into 100s. But what starts to happen, the body obviously starts to, to tire. Um, and it is important, there's things that we, we cannot um, stop, and that's that we cannot stop life. Um, so we do go through these changes. So then we start to look at what we can control, and that is controlling inflammation in the body, because as the body ages, there's going to be a lot more symptoms that the body is challenged with. And in each one of those symptoms, there is definitely going to be inflammation present with it. So if we can try and make life more comfortable by being able to manage um, those symptoms to support somebody and assist them to live life better um, as they go through their, their aging um, period in their life, um, it certainly makes a huge difference for people. And you see that, you know, you're a prime example of that, Ron, like you're 21 and you're, um, <laughs> and you're going through life living it very well because you look after yourself by what you're fueling your body with. So, you know, if I recap back on this, I just want to say, and you can agree with me or you can't because I want, if people listen to this later on, we've gone through a timeline of life. And it doesn't matter at what age you are from being conceived as a baby, as a fetus being carried um, in the womb of your mother, to being a baby, being through those toddler years, going through to a two to five year old, going through the younger years to a 12 year old, going through puberty, going through as a young adult, studying, becoming parents, going through the, you know, the more enjoyable part of life and you become grandparents. And then going through those aging years of where we um, life really does start to slow down for us. Amulin can be used and 24 seven, but Amulin primarily can be used for everybody and everybody should be taking it because there's a flavonoid deficiency syndrome that we just cannot get what we need out of our food. Like we used to be able to get, but primarily if we keep looking at the carbohydrates are sugars, 
and that we are constantly fueling our body with that in some format, even if we're not aware of it. So if we can have the management of refined carbohydrates and control our sugars to manage the inflammatory levels in our body, combine that with our food choices, we're going to live life better. Um, it's not going to cure, heal and or fix, but it's certainly going to help us live life better. Um, 24 seven, there are cases, and we will say this, that not everybody can take uh, 24 seven, you know, whether the AM formula, because it's got a percentage of caffeine in there, not everybody um, is able to do that um, for one reason or another. And so you've just got to, you know, it's a trial and error period, but as far as Emulin is concerned, everybody should be able to take it. There's only one area that they need to make sure that they're very cautious of. And that is if they are on blood thinners um, and they need to make sure that they do consult with their physician on a regular basis uh, due to the possibility of blood clots there, but you can still take it. Um, it's just a matter of monitoring. Uh, what are your thoughts there, Ron? Yeah, well, I will be 78 in less than five months and uh, I don't take any medications whatsoever, not even a baby aspirin. I rarely go to the doctor because if it's not broke, don't fix it. Uh, and I, I stay mobile. I, I think back of my dad at this age uh, he spent the last five years of his life basic, basically sitting in a chair, crippled up with arthritis in front of the television set, believing everything he heard on TV. And it's a joke in our family. If they said it on TV, it's got to be true. But, you know, and, and I, what I can physically do compared to what he was doing at this age, my age now, what a dramatic difference. And I'm his son. My mother only made 56. So there's some pre- conditions that I was born with that I've changed because of what I've made a mental decision, a conscious decision to stay mobile, to stay moving, to drink plenty of water, to eat right, to exercise, to sleep well, fuel the body with what it takes to be healthy and have a good life. You know, I, I, I'll challenge everybody on this call and those who are listening later, get down on the floor if you can, and without using your hands, get back up. I did it. Somebody said, I bet you can't do it. Well, put a bet like that out to, my, to Ron and you're going to see uh, somebody win that challenge because I'm always going to succeed in it. In fact, I was having dinner with the neighbors a few months ago and, and we were going to leave and go home and I just stood up out of the sofa that you sank down into and he said, you didn't even use your arms to get up. How did you do that? I said, well, I've, I've developed a good core because of my exercise, my routine of good, healthy eating and walking and, and all the nutrients that I take to feed my body and fuel my body to be the best it can be at 24, 64, 74, 84, 104. It all takes nutrients and we've got some great nutrients with Valentis. Emulin and 24-7 are at the top of the list for me. Yeah. So um, we well and truly have gone over our half an hour. We've gone through the timeline of life. We didn't plan this. And I hope that um, for those that are on this call, that you've got, you know, some great information and you're getting the message as intended that Emulin is for everybody. It does not matter what condition that you have. It has the ability to be able to assist you to manage your symptoms. So anything that has itis in it means that it's arthritis. But, you know, it's a matter of it may take longer for the next person for it to have a, a big noticeable benefit, but stick with it because it will help you and assist you. How much do you need to take? There is no magic answer there for you. How much you need to take may depend on how heavy you are. It may depend on what conditions that you're dealing with. And don't be frightened to increase or decrease your dose depending on what's happening in your life because you may have some things that change in your life that you need extra support. Um, so don't be scared to take extra support and taking additional Amulin and or 24-7, you know, for, for two or three days or four days uh, to get through whatever it is that your body is finding challenging. And then resume back to what you normally would take. But the big question here, the big uh, message that we're trying to put out here for you 
doesn't matter what you have. It's not going to cure what you have. It's not going to heal what you have and it's not going to fix what you have. But what it will do is support you and assist you to really manage what your symptoms are. Like I have six, I mean chronic conditions and they are chronic. Um, I was taking 14 medications and heavy medications. And those conditions that I have are still very much there, I can assure you. But I change and, and manage my doses to be able to support my body to get through my day. And it just simply works. And I watch what I eat. Somebody said to me today, um, through owning our own fitness center, as I said, and rehab center for years, and I was fit as. Um, you know, and people say, but you look really great. What are you doing? Nothing. But what are you doing? I said, I just walk you know, and I watch what I eat. And the only thing that's really changed for me is that I brought emulin into my diet. So I can tell you internally, my body, the inflammation levels are managed. My body inside is functioning to the best that it possibly can with what's going on. But I can tell you what, what has happened. My mobility is better. My skin health, and I'm a beautician by trade originally when I first left school, so vanity, <laughs> and a Virgo, um, my skin has just improved and over the four years of being on Emulin has just got better and better and better. Um, I don't know how many times people will say, what have you done? Have you had a facelift? Have you had this? Have you had that? No, uh, it's been through diet, but it's been Amulin is what has made the difference because I've always been, both my husband and I have always watched what we've eaten. We've just become more in tune with the importance of it since we've started taking Amulin because we realized how much of a difference managing your inflammatory levels, fueling your body with those missing flavonoids that Amulin can provide, that it just completes our wellness package. And we both, my husband's turning 62. He looks amazing, let me tell you, for his age. And his mobility is phenomenal. From being an ex-professional uh, player, he could still run out onto that field. His body fat percentages would be about 8%. Uh, he is a machine. And Emulin has been, his recovery on things has been phenomenal. So I just want to put that message out there. I want to thank you. I don't know if you've got any parting words to finish on today's call, Ron, because I've actually really enjoyed going through the timeline of life. I would just say take it long enough to allow the body to heal itself. We just need to give it the right fuel to do that. Yeah. Yeah, and no, I do. And I want to thank you, Ron, and thank you, um, everybody, for that's been on this call today. Um, as I said, it's taken a different direction from what we had planned, but I believe that we've probably really given um, a lot of important information for constant questions because it's not what we say, it's what you hear. It's not what we show you, it's what you see. But I guarantee you, if you stay on Emulin for long enough, you're going to really not only feel the benefits, but you're going to see the benefits. That I do guarantee you. So I want to thank you um, on behalf of Dr. Ron Bosima Senior and myself, Jackie Boyle. And again, uh, we have the privilege of stepping in for Dr. Ahrens. Um, he does thank everybody for your support, for those that get onto the calls and for those that watch them. And as soon as possible, he will resume and, and be back on and join us all as well. So have a great week, everybody, and have a great Valentine's Day. So whatever you're doing, go out and do the simple things. It doesn't have to be monumental, but just make the little effort because it counts for male and for female. And have an awesome week, and we shall catch you next week. Bye for now. Good night, everyone.